I was born in Paul. That's the most important thing, I think. And I'm still living here. And I'm a child of immigrants from Europe, from Lithuania, in uh, Europe, which is a small country uh, on the Baltic Sea. My father first came here in the late 1920s and uh, he had already met my mother there and she came here in the 1930s to marry him. He first set, set himself up here. They, they built a, a synagogue here and they had, but they mainly kept to themselves at the start because of language difficulties. And uh, then their children spoke Afrikaans English. But in the 1930s, there was a very powerful anti-Jewish movement here. And they, they tried to physically attack Jews. The, there was a newspaper that they had. I may have shown you this once. And this was in the 1930s, and this was a Nazi party founded by someone from Paul, uh, Mr. Louis Weichart, and he founded the South African, what was actually a Nazi party, and they had, a, they had their own newspaper, you see, complete with swastikas, and you could see here they were called the gray shirts because they wore gray. They did tell me, you know, about the problems they had here in Paul in the 1930s, but, uh, you know, they didn't dwell on it really. You know, the war was such a, the Second World War was such a powerful thing that it, it really, you know, covered everything else that happened beforehand. The, uh, the war was such a traumatic thing for them. All the Jewish people in Paul lost family, as I said, in the Second World War. So that was far worse than just having somebody saying bad things. It was actually people dying. So it was really more important to them. In Paul, it was introduced quite late, but it was enforced, unfortunately. So we had all the colored people forced to move out here. If they owned the houses, they were paid for the houses, but they had no choice but to move. So one of the saddest things I remember was uh, when they closed the church. I remember they walked from the church with the keys of the church. A sad sight in, into a waiting a bus which took them to Paul East, which was their new uh, place where they were forced to stay. And they built a church there but the whole culture which developed over 150 years or whatever, over 100 years, that was destroyed by this move. Yes, well, uh, they, uh, they had a shop here in this building in the, f in the front. Uh, and their clientele, their customers, were the colored people. I mean, they're gone. They, they left. They had a shop. My parents had a shop here. It was called Paul Supply Store. And there was also a cafe there called the Victoria Cafe, where the uh, intelligentsia of Paul came over coffee to discuss what Churchill's going to do next in the war. Looking back, there was a certain innocence to the whole situation. A certain innocence 
may be linked to ignorance. I, I don't know. But Paul was quite a nice place, and it still is. And uh, I haven't got any bad feelings, you know, regrets uh, having been brought up here or living here. As a child, or maybe a young adult, to, to see how the church uh, was also part of the apartheid system and that how they could preach to love your neighbor and then still practice apartheid was always an amazing contradiction to me. I mean, even a child could see it. It's not necessary. You don't have to be an adult. The National Party always won very handsomely. And then way back in the 1980s came a more liberal party, the Progressive Party, later the Progressive Federal Party, which I supported. And it was, a, it was a, an anti-apartheid party. And I remember working for them when they voted in the election. Uh, working for them uh, in the town or foyer. Each party had their own uh, table. What dirty looks I got from people that how dare I support uh, an opposition party, you know, anti-apartheid. But nothing happened to me. But still, the candidate here in, uh, that stood, it was actually a candidate that stood, she only got a few hundred votes. But she couldn't get a place uh, where she could address people, where, you know, like a, a hall where she could go. I arranged that the Jewish hall, she could go there and address them from there. It was the only organization that gave her a hall. And that was, uh, this was in the 1980s, very late in the day, and everybody thought the situation in South Africa will never change, but it did. <laughs>